guys, that's your commander today. Ray Shadow Legends with a Rio Bone Spear guide. Uh, shout out to all of you guys, Chris and FRK and everybody else who is asking me for Rio and Queen Ava. We'll have a Queen Ava updated guide as well after her buff. Uh, but a lot of you guys requesting some uh, Rio Bone Spear love and for good reason. She is such an incredible, such a good and versatile and powerful Void Legendary in the game. I can't wait to share her with you guys. Uh, odds are, hopefully you're watching this video because you have her if so congratulations because she really is an absolute game changer in every sense of the world such a unique and powerful champion in this game let's go ahead and take a look at what makes her so amazing Okay, guys, so as we mentioned, Rio Bone Spear is a Void legendary Shadowkin champion, and she looks so freaking cool. I guess she's got, well, a uh, a Bone Spear, I guess I want to say, probably as a weapon here. Emanates kind of this, this uh, orange, red, uh, whatever it is, uh, flame, I guess, right? Uh, overall, I don't know if that's a body tattoo or what is going on here, but she looks freaking amazing. Very, very cool aesthetics. I was going to say all the way down to the earrings, but those aren't earrings. They're just... Uh, they're uh the horn rings their horn rings uh okay so what does she do first of all her base stats are pretty solid across the board nothing blows me away here but everything is you know it, it, it's doable right her speed is 105 about average for a void legendary maybe slightly above average and everything else survivability it's there right on her absorption uh by the way i should say almost 1200 base attack that's going to come into play here because for a support champion she can smack she has a lot of damage on her a1 and specifically her A2 ability. More on that in a moment. Absorption, her A1 ability places a continuous heal, attacks one enemy, places a continuous heal on the ally with the lowest HP for one turn. Also places a weak version continuous heal on all allies with 30% HP or less for one turn. What a really, really solid A1 ability. Obviously, the ally who needs it the most gets the big version of continuous heal. And then everybody else who's below 30% HP, at least they get something. Uh, it's nice for an A1 for sure, right? On the A2, pressure points, a three-turn cooldown. Look at all these debuffs. It reminds me kind of a Ramen 2 A2 ability, right? Uh, it just has like everything and anything you could want on this A2 ability. It places a stun on the target for one turn, as well as a burn, decrease defense, all big versions, weaken, excuse me, decrease attack and decrease crit rate. Uh, everything except for decreased speed is what we're missing there, right? But so many powerful debuffs, so many tier one debuffs, so to speak, all on the same ability with nice multipliers to boot. On the A3 ability, Perfect Body, uh, it has a decent amount of books, five legendary skill tomes into this ability, but they all go right to the cooldown, getting it from a six to a three. She's absolutely a legendary worth booking. These books are going to be valuable, and they're going to be important to getting the full utility out of her kit, because this on a six turn cooldown, it's not going to cut it. So a full cleanse. Then a block debuff for two turns this is on a three turn cooldown. That's very powerful in its own right. A block debuff for two turns and a cleanse, but you also get this juicy heal. Heals all allies by 35% of their max HP and a further 5% for each debuff removed from them. So not hard to get to a 45% heal. That's insane. Only two debuffs need to be cleansed in order to hit that threshold. Even though that heal is based on their max HP and not her max HP, which would be ideal, it's still a massive heal nonetheless. On the passive, Reflect. This is such a powerful passive as well, guys. When receiving any debuffs, instantly transfers them from this champion to the attacker. Now, I want to focus your attention on the word them. It's not, it is a three turn cooldown, so it only happens one out of every, you know, three of her turns, right? That's the downside. Uh, the upside is it's basically if she's getting, you know, 10 debuffs thrown at her, or maybe two, let's be a little bit more realistic, two debuffs thrown at her, uh, all of them are going to be transferred back onto the attacker. So, for example, for Dragon, all those poisons will go back, and then there'll be a couple turns before she's. Uh, able to do it again but keep in mind will not transfer debuffs that cannot be removed okay so there is some cap to that such as i don't know protected bombs looking at you bombo right increase ally attack and faction chris by 42 percent on the aura not the best aura in the world but uh it is what it is the kit is already absolutely fantastic and hey i guess you could use her as an aura lead in faction wars if you lacked a better option out there however you know hopefully you have your hands on a hatatsu or something like that i'd rather go with the defense aura so guys let's get into how we 
have her geared out. We have her running in triple perception. We get a whopping 120 accuracy plus 15% speed. I love triple perception on Rio Bone Spear, basically for anywhere in the game. Now on Hydra Clan Boss, some people do run her on a Relentless set, uh, basically to get the A3 down to a two-turn cooldown, uh, where we have block debuffs all the time and more cleanses and more heals coming down for your team. That being said, I prefer just triple perception. That way we can get the speed and the accuracy, the two main stats that we need on this champion, obviously factoring in survivability as well. So total stats on her are going to be 68k on the HP, 4600 on the defense, 289, 96, 234 on the crit rate, crit damage, and 522 on the accuracy. So the way I tackle building Rio Bone Spear is first and foremost, I want her with enough accuracy to land all of the juicy debuffs on that A2 ability. After that, I want her going as fast as possible because of that A1 continuous heals and then everything else that she's obviously doing that is incredibly OP and amazing, right? So accuracy, speed, and then after that, I'm dividing my interest in between focusing on making sure she stays alive. Obviously, she's going to do no good to us if she's dead, right? After that, as, sure, as soon as I'm aware or, or good that she's going to stay alive, I can go ahead and start allocating uh, my gear towards crit rate, crit damage to get some damage out of this champion as well. And let me tell you, she can deal some damage for a support champion. So in terms of the artifacts that we do have on her, we have accuracy, I think. Uh, actually, we have HP on the banner. That's the nice thing. Having triple perception or triple accuracy gear on a champion allows you to sometimes get away with going HP or defense or survivability attack, whatever you're looking for on your banner, right? For the majority of you guys, I would consider accuracy on the banner if you need it to get to that threshold that you need for the whatever content that you're tackling in the game. Uh, I have crit damage on the amulet and I have defense on the ring. I'm not loving this ring, this five-star ring on Rio Bone Spear here, but we'll run with it. We, we have it, right? Uh, I do have her fully empowered. I apologize. I, you know, I, I have to cover all the champions the way that I have them. So uh, maybe a bit realistic in terms of the stats, because keep in mind, I do like to call it out, right? When we do have these insane builds, uh, we're getting a lot of these stats from Blessing and Empowerment. So about 15K of this HP is from those two factors. So keep that in mind. She'd be a little bit over 50K uh, without a... a any empowerment or without a blessing on her uh that being said though i still wouldn't change the build up that much regarding these stats you know i'd, I'd be throwing away a lot a significant amount 155 or so of accuracy but i'd still run her with 400 or so that would still suffice uh same thing with the speed i'm, I'm gaining uh quite a bit between uh, between masteries faction guardians and empowerment i'm getting 27 the speed there but i would still run her the exact same way without any of these extra blessing empowerment and faction guardian and mastery stats here all right speed on the boots i would want to actually i'll do it right now uh trying to use my chaos dust primarily for speed boots to try to get speed as a substat i'm not too crazy though i'm not going to waste all my dust on one piece if we can get lucky and we don't that time ah, i hate that it has an escalating cost man you know i don't want to blow all my dust in one shebang here and one guide uh, i do have defense percentage on the chest i think i would probably go with uh hp percentage uh, given my druthers but it's very close want to make sure you're not totally neglecting either hp or defense on this champion i do have crit rate on the gauntlets again if i needed to keep her alive i would absolutely go with hp percentage or defense percentage instead these are pretty nice because i get some hp in the substats as well as defense percentage on the ascension stats so still that's survivability that we're looking for there and then i'm just looking for speed essentially and accuracy on my substats in general on the rest of my weapons my helmet and my shield uh in terms of blessings uh she's made for brimstone or should i say brimstone is made for rio bone spear right uh she already has a lot of accuracy so even though i don't have her you know fully awakened at six star she's still has a 60% chance of placing a protected smite, which is really, really powerful, uh, let alone all the stats that we get from a uh, from, from the Awakening, right? So uh, other options for Rio Bone Spear, if you were going to use her in PvP, in the arena, she's not known to like shine in PvP. However, she can absolutely be formidable in PvP as well with that nice A3, get the cleanse, the block debuff, someone to a Pythion minus the revival, you know what I'm saying, on the A2. So it can definitely be useful there, uh, in which case I would go polymorph however that's not her traditional she's mainly a pve 
beast, animal, from Hydra to Doom Tower to everywhere else. We'll talk about where we can use her in a bit here. So that's probably the way I would go Brimstone. That is the way I'm going here in this video. Uh, in terms of Masteries, we went pretty basic here. We went down the left-hand side. We picked up uh, War Master. And on the right-hand side, we did pick up all of the Healing Masteries. Now, you really have a decision to make here. We can go with the Accuracy, right? Uh, you guys know the Accuracy Masteries, Pinpoint, Accuracy, Charge Focused, and Swarm Smart. And then we can go down to maybe Evil Eye, pick up Lore of Steel if we can use it. We certainly can with three perception sets here. And then Master Hexer is going to be great to extend the duration of those debuffs on that A2 ability. Uh, but... In today's video, I still picked up Master Hexer. I still picked up Lore of Steel, but instead I went down Lay on Hands, uh, Healing Savior, Merciful Aid, and Lasting Gifts to hopefully extend the duration not only of the block debuffs on that A3 ability, but again, of those continuous heals that she's dropping on her A1. Uh, so those are, that's the way that I chose to uh, build her mastery-wise. Let's take a quick look at HellHades.com. They give her a 4.5 overall score, which is incredibly good, which it should be. Uh, and look at these scores, guys. I mean, you can make a case that she's a 5 out of 5. Again, PvE, she's insane. PvP, she's really good, as I said, uh, but she does tail off. You don't see her much in the end-to-end -end game of the arena right now in the meta, uh, but they do give her a 5 out of 5 in the arena. Gold 1, you can see her pick rate is way below 1%, so again, she's not getting a lot of use, and it gets lower and lower the higher that you go here. Barely any use at the top of live arena, uh, but... Uh, again, we already talked about it. In, in arena progression, Great Hall Farming absolutely can use her as a cleanser. Uh, but look at all these key areas that she's good in. Regular Clan Boss, Hydra Clan Boss, Sand Devil 5 out of 5, Shogun 5 out of 5. Shogun, need those cleansers. She's got you covered. I use her in both Sand Devil and Shogun on both of my main teams. Dragon, Ice Golem, Dragon to me, she's a 5 out of 5. Spider, I mean, you name it, you can use her almost everywhere in the game. One of the raid's most versatile champions because she has so many essential debuffs and such a good and powerful A3 ability. She's a 4.3 multiplier on her A1 and a 5.8 multiplier on her A2 ability. That is some serious damage there. Uh, for general PvE, they recommend a similar loadout that I have in terms of masteries. Uh, they did go in and they grabbed, uh, a, well, they went with the accuracy instead of the healing as we just spoke about. For clan boss, they go down the uh, the defense tree instead of the support, and they pick up retribution and deterrence. Uh, where else do they go? Cleanser, healer. They go down with Timely Intervention. If you're just looking for a, a bomb healer for your team and you don't care about any damage, which in my opinion, you're probably throwing away an often overlooked part of her kit if you don't you know, go for any damage. Uh, but that said, you could still build her with 100% crit rate and go with a cleanser slash healer loadout like this. Uh, I like this as well, right? You get all the healing masteries, come in again with that lasting gifts and then go to Timely Intervention so she can come in, swoop in and heal and cleanse when your allies need it the most uh all right guys let's go ahead and show her in action here uh I don't really have an arena team kind of ready uh, for her right now or with her right now but let's go ahead and just throw her on uh all of my teams right now are pretty end gamey I would say uh no let's go with this squad here I like this I like this blender comp but uh she doesn't really fit on a blender comp either right uh let's put her on this team this is kind of an old school team. Let's put her in here for Lady Mikage. And hopefully we need a cleanse on this team. Also, hopefully I have gear. Yeah, of course I have gear on Arbiter. What am I talking about? All right. So here we go. We have Xena as our nuker here in Stoneskin. We're going to be able to come in and CC the enemy team. Now, the cool thing is, is from a support champion who we're looking at for, for cleanses and, and the whole nine here. We can also, hey, we don't need to use the cleanse or the heal, or, you know, we could obviously use the block debuffs. They have Bad Alcazar. Uh, but instead, we can come in and look at this. We have a sheep, we have a stun, we have a stun. We might as well stun the only buddy on uh, the only person on their team who's already or not CC'd in Bad Alcazar. But hey, we went and we killed him instead because she hits that hard with that A2. As I told you guys. Man, she can smack with that A2, and you just saw it right there. Uh, 90k damage on Battle Kazar. Now, obviously, I don't know the build of Battle Kazar on this particular team, but I'm telling you guys, she can really smack with it. So now she can come in with the block debuffs, 
and we're pretty much good to go here. Again, that was her A1 hitting for 32K on Mountain King, and uh, we can take down Tyrant here and end this one. Uh, but you can see, that's the cool thing about her in the arena. She does so much. So even though, as I mentioned, probably belaboring the point here, but as I mentioned, she's not like super, super ultra end game, but boy, she can serve like two important roles, some CC, some heals, cleanses, block debuffs, uh, all in one champion on your team. And I love those type of champions in this game. I talk about it all the time. What am I looking out for? First and foremost, I'm looking for a champion uh, on my team that ideally can fit the role of two champions. That way it saves me a spot on my squad to put another nuke or another control champion, uh, whatever I want to on our any particular team. So this is my Sand Devil 25 team, guys. This is my main squad. So real quick, I'll show you the team setup and the speeds on these champions. I have Siffy coming in with the opening for Curse of Longing. Uh, I have Godseeker Aniri opening with Quest for Meaning. I have Rio Bone Spear opening with Pressure Points and then Prioritizing Perfect Body A3. I have New coming in and shutting off the Fury of the King, and I have Kaimar opening and prioritizing his Seal of Magic ability. I also have Kaimar built of the slow uh, build. That way he can come in after Newt goes. So here comes Rio, uh, putting basically, again, every debuff known to man. Uh, I kid a little bit, but it feels that way when you land all of those debuffs in one fell swoop there. Most importantly, uh, the weaken and the decrease defense, right? And obviously that applies not just to Sand Devil, uh, but to basically every Every boss in the game right we're landing the burn which is you know one of the best damage dealing against boss abilities in the game as well so here about 30 seconds or so uh we come in and we get the job done so rio bone spear is playing a pivotal role as our debuffer there uh and she can cleanse as well with the a3 obviously help keep everybody alive and heal them up if things go wrong uh against the sand devil necropolis stage 25 uh let me go ahead and show you it's crazy because, again, she's one of those champions that I could really showcase her pretty much anywhere, right, in the game. Uh, let me show you a Doom Tower boss. It's been a while since we focused on the Frost Spider. So let's go in here with Frost Spider. I'll come back to you guys when we actually get to the Frost Spider. Uh, but she's so good against Frost Spider as she is against almost every boss because she's got the burn and the debuffs for the Frost Spider. At the same time, she can come in here and cleanse everybody else on our team, right? So she's serving those two roles, those dual role capabilities of this champion. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, guys, sorry. It did not take 11 minutes or 12 minutes to get here, by the way. I had a call, so I took that, uh, but we're back. Uh, but yeah, you can see her just doing her thing here, not only the brimstone, but the burn and everything else that she brings to the table, plus the cleanse, right? She's able to come in here and block debuffs and cleanse on our allies as you just saw right there so you know regardless of the team whether you're rocking a Lydia and walking Tomb Drang or whoever Drekstar Blood Twin whoever you're using for the Frost Spider uh, to me again I could have picked almost every Doom Tower boss in the game for Rio Bone Spear she's that good right but this exemplifies how you can use her debuffs and her A3 and really her, her A1 as well right all in conjunction together and uh, just get a ton of versatility viability out of her A everywhere inside the game so here we go with this team again that that a2 i mean it can it can smack that a2 that's the thing about rio bone spear that personally i was not ready for and again she's coming in there she's cleansing all those uh freezes and uh everything else that the frost spider is throwing at our team making sure that everybody else is doing exactly what they need to be doing and not cc'd make sure they're fully healed all the debuffs uh the whole nine such an incredible champion guys hopefully you've enjoyed this guy Again, if you're watching this video, I say this at the at the end of the very, very good champion guide videos. If you're watching this video because you actually got your hands on Rio Bone Spear, congratulations. She is an absolute game changer. She is so, so worthy of the Void Legendary title in this game. And you can't say that sadly about all the Void Legos out there or even the majority of Void Legos out there in the game. So there it is, guys. Keep the champion guide requests coming in the comments below. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.